Hi nerds, welcome back. It's a bit later than normal, but it's time for my September wrap up. Um, it's mostly spooky books, so yay! <laughs> uh, so I thought I would dress up spooky a bit. In September I have read 16 books, which total to 5,098 pages. Seven of them were audiobooks and nine physical books. I owned nine of those books and I borrowed seven. Two of those books were adult, two were young adult and the other 12 were all middle grade. I've given out five five stars, six four stars, three three stars and one two star. book I've read in September was The City of Ghosts by Fee Swapped and I really loved it. I gave it four stars. Um, it's the first in the series. I really would like to finish the series but um, it's probably not going to happen this year in spooky season so we'll see. Um, it's about a girl who has a best friend that is a ghost and her parents are ghost hunters. Uh, and they're making a TV show, so they travel for that. And it was really, really fun. The second book I've read is The Skeleton Man. Of The Legend of Skeleton Man. And it's actually the first and the two book in one. I listened to this on an audiobook. And it was surprisingly good. I had no expectation, expectations going into this book. Um, I, I really, really liked it. I gave it four stars. Um, it was really creepy. It was very eerie. And the atmosphere in the book was really, really good. Um, it did feel more like a YA, but it's uh, set as a middle grade. So be wary of that if you want to read it, um, to give it to a child to read. Um, it felt more YA. There is no um, love interest or anything in it, but it is quite scary for a middle grade so um so just so you know <laughs> but i loved it so the legend of skeleton is man is about molly and her father grown up is grown up in a mohawk reserve and um they they tell each other the legend of skeleton man which ate his family because he was always so hungry and Molly finds herself in a situation where her parents are missing and at some point it all started to remind her of the legend of Skeleton Man. And it was a very eerie, quite dark book, especially for middle grade. But that's also the reason I loved it. So I can't tell you if the Mohawk um, rap is really good or not because I don't know any Mohawk people. So. I can't tell you, um, but it felt respectful to me. So I hope it did. <laughs> um, I really loved it. Next up, I have read Crowfall by Fusty Hardy. And I had very high expectations for this book. Um, I heard a lot and lots of good things about Fussy Hardy's writing and I did like this book but it was just a three star for me um, this is about Orin Crowfall and she lives on an island um, Orin lives on this island and she lives on the bad side on the island where all the baddies go or if someone in your family has done something wrong you go there and um, she's kind of a helper or a servant to the one who's running the island and Odin finds out things she shouldn't have and she gets in danger pretty much and there is also a metallical sea snake I love that part <laughs> so um it was good it wasn't just I was suspecting this would get a four or five star 
So that's why I might look a bit disappointing, but this was still a very fun read. After that, I've read Soulbinder by Sebastian Di Castel. Um, they all got five stars so far, and this one got four stars. And that's just because we didn't spend as much time with Regis and Various as I would love to. Because I would love books about Various and Regis and never leave them aside. Because they're my favorite. Um, but again, it was a very good book. Um, I love the magic system in this. I love the characters in this. I like love pretty much every character except for the, the protagonist. Uh, I don't really care about him, but the rest is great. Uh, and um, that I don't really care about him is very, very realistic to his uh, character. Uh, the spot he's in. Um, that's also what's happening to him in the book. He's very regular. So I think Sebastian Nicosel wrote him very, very well to give me the same feelings about him. So um, it's I love that that part too. Um, I will not be continuing with series this month just because I only want to read spooky books. But I will pick the series back up in November because I really, really love it. After that, I've listened to the 13 Curses by Michelle Harrison, and it's the second in the 13 Treasures series. It's the first series she ever wrote. Um, that also means I like it a, a little bit less than his, her Pinch of Magic series, because they all got five stars. Uh, the first book in this series got three stars, and the 13 Curses got four stars. This book was better than the first. Um... I did really like the concept. It's all about the fairy world. Um, the main character is looking for her brother. And she kind of makes a deal with the fairy king. But of course it's not a fair deal. And she needs to find 13 curses. Um, which is a legend in the fairy tale world. It's really, really well done. I loved it. So um, only one book left in that series. So I hope I can... Do that in November too and finish out the series, but um, we'll see. After that, I wrote read Small Spaces by Catherine Arda, and I see here on my notes I only gave this four stars, which is damn ridiculous. Dumb me. I'm going to have a real chat with myself after this, uh, but I'm gonna change it. It's definitely a five star. I don't know why I gave it four, but it's great. I love this book. It's one of my favorite middle grade spooky books now. Um, let me see how the, how the character is named. Oh, Ollie. It's about Ollie. And she goes to this trip with school. And um, they end up in a farm. And there were very, very scary sacred crowds. And this is an eerie book. It's very, very atmospheric. The atmosphere in this book is so damn good. It is good. Um, I put it through carpal and apparently it came out as a four star, which is ridiculous. I did like the plot. I could not guess the plot, which is great for middle grade, especially. Um, it's, uh, it's such an atmospheric book. If you like fall vibes and get a little bit scared, this is great. Um, and it's the first in a series. I really, really want to read um, the, the other two now too in October, please. But I still have to buy them uh, because I don't let myself buy the whole series at once. I just... Buy the first, see if I like it, and then buy the rest of the series. So, um, but I love the series, so I'm going to buy the rest. <laughs> After that, I have read Skeleton Creek Ryan's Journal. This is an older book. Um, it's written by Patrick Kamen, and I found out it's an older book because um, in this book you were directed to a website and the website didn't work or at least the videos on the website didn't work anymore um, you can find them on YouTube though so um, this is about kind of a haunted town 
situa situation here and something happened to Ryan so he's housebound and he writes in his journal to find stuff out and his friend goes outside and films a lot. So this book is Ryan's journal and they're all journal entries which make it a really fast read and at some point you were directed to the videos that his friend Sarah sent him to. Um, that It was the first time I've read a book written as a diary and a book that has videos in it as well, which I loved. So um, really nice concept and it got four stars purely, um, mostly for that. It was an eerie book. I'm way easier scared with videos than with books. So the first two videos were actually very scary for me, um, but the rest of the book really wasn't. So uh, still fun. After that, I listened to Or Dark Duet by Fee Swap. Damn, that's a good theology. I loved it. I gave this one five stars as well, uh, as well as the first. It was so good. Um, I like that we get kind of the monster perspective in this theology. Um, mental gray characters, that's, that's her jam. And now I get why. It's it's just really good. That's it. It's I don't know what to say, guys. It was I can't really say anything because it spoils the first book. But the characters were good. The atmosphere was good. The plot was good. The writing all was good. It got five stars, and I love it. And I don't own the series physical, and I need to. I really, really need to now. After that, there is another five story. I had a great month, didn't I? Um, the Haunting of Evelyn Jones, written by Phil Hikes. Oh, damn. Such a good book. Also, this has a sequel, which I need to read now. Um, I love this so much. The atmosphere in this book is damn good. It was a bit scary, a bit less than small spaces, I think, but it's still scary actually for a middle grade. Um, and of course, Evelyn gets haunted. And it's on an eerie sea town house in a small village. And I loved it. It was so damn good. This is also now one of my favorite spooky middle grades. Everybody needs to read it. Um, it it's about the legend of the town, and it's, I don't know. It's the his. I really felt it like the history was real of the town, and the town was real, and it's just really. I don't know. Told true. I I don't know how to say it. It felt really real, and it's. It, it was just damn good. That's it. Um, loved it. I need a sequel. I need to buy a lot of books now because I had so many great, great books this month um, where I all want a sequel for, from. After that, we got another five star and it's Gozart uh, by Peter Kolwijk. This is actually a Dutch book and I've looked it up immediately after. It, unfortunately, it isn't translated yet, but we're currently in Children's Book Week in Holland, um, which were, is also the week that the children's books get their prizes out. And this one won. Gozer won um, what we call the Gouden Griffel. And it's the best, it's the damn best literature prize you can get as a children's book. And he did it. And it was so deserved. I cried over this book. I go again. See that? I never cry from books. Never. If I do, it's like three tears and then it it's done. I sobbed over this. My eye was out. Look. I'm getting tears again because of this damn book. This damn book does that to me. Um. It deserved the price. It's so good. And I hope now that it got a price. 
it will be translated to English very fast. Because this is a story I believe every child should read. Um, every adult should read. And this is all about Tease. And Tease has a friend, his best friend, called Gozart. Um, but nobody else can see him. <laughs> so, um, um, other people say Tease, his friend, isn't real. Tease thinks he's just invisible. <laughs> um, and Tease and Gozart go on all those adventures. Not only they can see, they both have a very, very big imagination. And actually it gets Tees in quite a lot of trouble. And his parents one day decide they can't handle it anymore and Tees really needs help. So um, he's sent to um, this mental health hospital kind of thing. Um, where he needs to stay and get some medicine and get therapy because of his invisible friend. Um, and we get along inside those that mental health facility. Um, I loved that this was not a here's your medicine, quick fix kind of thing. It wasn't. Tease at first uh, didn't want to take his medicine, so he re refused to do so. Um, and a friend of him called Luna that he met in the hospital um, told him to do so. And when he did, it wasn't gone. He just had the means to get, you know, to learn about it and um, he really needs to learn how to live with it and not get into trouble with his friend <laughs> that nobody else can see um, and I love that I really really love that about this book and he gets in such weird trouble that might sound unbelievable to a lot of people but this book reminded me a lot of my clients I do work in psych uh, psychiatric care and I have had a lot of clients with um, visions um, things they can see that I can't uh, and sometimes they do can see people I can't um, and they have been in very similar situations so it does um, felt really really real to me and it does make me wonder if Peter Kolwijk has ever has some kind of diagnosis uh, and has been either giving care in a psychiatric care or has been taken care of for his mental health because this was so realistic of course it's written in a fun and an active and adventure kind of way for children but it still was very realistic I could see clients of mine in this and um, I love that and I love the fact that it wasn't here's your drugs here's your medicine take it it's all over it wasn't um, so I really love that and there is a companion novel from this um, from Luna because um, he made friends with Luna in this asylum and uh, Luna can hear voices and she can hear the voice of his friend Gozert. So, uh, and else, that's, uh, that sounds like something that is maybe too far-fetched. I get it. But I have seen in the psychiatric care uh, that when people, the two people have a really strong bond, they do have the same... Um, visions or I, I don't know what's the English word um, but when they can hear or see stuff that other people can't uh, and they sometimes share the same illusion illusion isn't the proper word but I hope you get what I mean then so that's actually a thing that could have happened that isn't overly exaggerated of course it was handy to have that right here but um, still it is something that is possible 
So I love that. Sop my eyeballs out. Almost did it again in this video. Um, so after that I immediately bought Luna. Because I had to. And I really, really wanted to read it. Um, it's actually the one of the last books I've read that month. But I'm just going to skip ahead to Luna. Um, because it makes sense. It's the companion novel. And Luna also got five stars for me. It's a pretty fall cover, isn't it? That's what actually drew to me drew me to it. And then I found out um, he had written Gozert as well. And um, uh, the person in the shops told me that uh, it was preferable to read uh, Gozer first. Although you can read them separately. Um, this is Luna. And Luna hears voices. And one of the voices you can hear is Gozert. Um, and it goes really, really badly with Luna and her family doesn't understand her. And it has been rough for Luna in the asylum. And she also almost needed to go to something they call the zombie. <laughs> the zombie unit. Uh, because all the kids are drugged there so badly. They can't do anything else. They just sit and stare. Um... Which I thought was really funny. I'm so sorry, but um, again, I did. I work in a psychiatric uh, asylum, and I am against overly medicating people. So it was really funny to me that it's described in such a way that that is addressed in these children books, and it was really damn good. And um, Luna gets out. Her mom takes her out because something that happened. And uh, they go to this kind of vacation park. And Luna meets a family there that are uh, Mexican heritage. And they're going to celebrate uh, Dia de la Mordas. I'm not pronouncing that right, did I? I tried. If you say it really fast, it might, you know, seems like I did a good job. Uh, but uh, they are going to celebrate the Day of the Dad. And... Also, these, book, the bo these books, they're illustrated by Linda Fass. And the illustrations are gorgeous. Look at this. It's pretty. Um, I love these books. Unfortunately, they're not yet translated in English. And I really hope they will be soon because it was such a strong message about learning who you are, accepting who you are with flaws and all, um, getting to, you know, getting your family and your surroundings to accept you for who you are. Even if you can hear voices or see your best friend that nobody else can see, um, it was, it was just really, really good. Um, so yes, I do hope they get translated soon. There will be a third book out, uh, but they're not announced which character will be in it. It will be another character that we follow and I'm really excited for it. So, um, yay. <laughs> I did also listen to Gretel on audiobook. It's a Hansel and Gretel retelling and it was a horror story. I loved it. This was grim dark. It's really dark. And that's why I loved it. It's damn good. It also gave five stars. It got five stars for me. And it is the first in the series. So I've... all the other audiobooks are actually on the same service. So I could have listened to the next one. But I didn't want to because I want to force myself to buy them all. Because I love the series so much. And I really want to support the author. So that's the thing. It they're that good. And it's really, really, really dark. I love the first chapter. Immediately we get the view of the witch. And that was amazing. I like that. I like it if we get you know the villains or the monsters um perspective. And that chapter was so very well written. I love the writing style in this. I love the, love the atmosphere, of course. Um, it was very in... I don't... 
it wasn't your normal hands-on Gretel retelling. It was very smartly done. The connections were really, really well done. Um, and the familiar bonds and stuff like that. So, yeah. God, I need to read the rest of the series. That's the thing, right? This month. That's my kind of my mantra already. God, I need to buy the rest of the series. Loved it. <laughs> Uh, after that, I've read the, the Tentacle Boy, uh, both the Tentacle Boy and Crowfall um, are coming in a separate vlog because those were the books from Tales by Mills from August. So I, I just need to edit that vlog uh, and then I can post it. My books are fallen, but they're good now. Um... The Tentacle Boy was a very fantasy-esque sto story. Um, it's about Marina and one day she meets William. And that's a boy with tentacles. And it's in a fishmonger town where the sea is very important, where fish is very important. So that's, you know, getting all kinds of trouble and adventure and opinions. There are so many different opinions by the fish town. Um, but it's, it's, it was really fun. It, it was a really fun read. It gave, it, um, I gave it three stars. After that, I've read The Witch Girls, which, uh, is the second in the Witch Guide to Cooking with Children series by Keith McGonagall. McGowan. Sorry. That one. Um, this, I was suspecting this to be a hands-on Gretel retelling, but it isn't. It's a retelling of an, um, another um, grim fairy tale, which I wasn't familiar with. Um, but it did have the same creepy and eerie vibe as the first book. I love this series uh, very much for their atmosphere. They're a bit, bit um, on the darker side, actually. Um, and this is about the two children. And I can't really tell you much because it's the same two children from the first book. This book started right where the first one left off. So I'm probably going to spoil everything if I tell you anything about this book. So I won't. But it was good. There are two kids involved. A fairy tale retelling. So, you know, you can probably guess a forest by now. And um, it was dark. And really fun. That only leaves two more books. And uh, one of them was If We Were Villains. By Emma Rio. Which is a young adult. Or is it an adult? It's an adult. Dark Academia one. And I was so, so hyped for this book. Uh, Lexi talked about this book very lovingly. Actually, everything, everyone I've seen talking about it was loving this book. And I didn't. I, I, I really didn't. I could have put it down anytime. I didn't care. I did finish it, but I I got it. I gave it two stars just for finish, finishing it. Um, it's a book where they're we following a bunch of students from a very special school uh, that uh, it's it's drama class essentially and they study only Shakespeare and um, there is a lot of talk about Shakespeare in here which I don't mind except for um, it was 75% uh, of the book I guess so it was a bit much and that combined with the very he said, she said, they said kind of form and telling uh, the story I didn't really care about it I actually guessed the plot very quickly I kept reading because everybody was so hyped about this book and loving it so much I thought well at least the plot has to be good the ending has to be very 
special or um, at least surprised, surprisingly, um, but it wasn't for me. I guess it only started, it happened that way. There was a little surprise at the very end, which set things up. If if there will be a second book, I don't know, but they could just because of the last page. Um, but overall, you know, that wasn't really in the plot. Might be in the plot of the second book, but uh, uh, so yeah, the plot. I was. It was, you know, I guess that. I didn't really care about this book at all. I didn't like the writing style. The atmosphere felt a bit short for me, but it was the best thing of the book. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan. Unfortunately, because I was really, really looking forward to this, uh, I was really looking forward to indulging in a good Dark Academia book. So, um... That brings us to the last book, and I've read that on an audiobook as well, which is The Language of Ghosts. Hence the title, I was thinking this was a spooky book. It isn't. Um, not really. It's more like a middle grade fantasy, which I love, so didn't care. Uh, it's It got three stars for me. Um, this was about a family of young children. Of royalty and their mother get assassinated so the three children um, you know kind of hide and try to flee and live somewhere else and we follow them in their journey and it has magic in it and it was really good the atmosphere was really um, it was a really fun read nothing super excited or special but a really fun solid read so it got three stars and that was it all the 16 books i've read in september um please tell me if I <laughs> that i'm not the only one that didn't like if we were villains um that would help me um feel not so alone but otherwise i will take it if you loved if we were villains fine good for you uh, I hope, you know, you deserve that. You deserve a good book. So, um, no hard feelings there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't. And I hope I'm not the only one out there that doesn't like if we were villains. I really hope you like this video. Please think about like and subscribe because it helps me grow my channel. Um, I'll see you soon in the next video. And for now, bye!